Not one, not two, but three sneakers come at you in today's video and it's a pack from South Korea from Ruo Han Wang, an artist, a Korean artist based out of Berlin in Germany at the moment. Very distinctive artist, very distinctive style and putting all of that on not one, not two, but three Nike sneakers is an absolute genius move. It's a bit lost. I'll admit it's a bit lost in the, the sort of current vibe of packs. There have just been so many Nike packs that have dropped in the last like month or so. It started off, if you ask me, it started off with the recycled canvas pack, which had five silhouettes, six colorways in it. There's also been the denim pack. Uh, there have been, uh, man, there's been so many. I'm trying to think of all of them at once. There's uh, just, and that, that was it. it was the uh, power wall pack as well and uh, there's just been a ton of different packs that have dropped over the last month or so so this this guy coming out it would normally have a lot more sort of power behind it but it's it's kind of lost in the fact that there's a bunch of packs for example yesterday uh, this double pack from the blazer line which was uh, called color code uh, i'm sure they'll change the name as it gets closer to the, closer to the dark drop date uh, but it was a kind of a cool thing to have happen that we did a blazer yesterday and in today's pack we've got a blazer today as well uh, and then two days ago it was a dunk low uh, from the korean line in um, two cities in korea seoul and busan down below uh, in the southern part of the, the country so uh, so we had a korean tie-up two days ago with the dunk line we had a blazer tie-up yesterday with uh, the color code line and then that mashes all together today as we go with the Ruo Han Wang pack that's coming on September the 24th, I think it is. Uh, so what we're going to do today is we're going to look at all three of those shoes, uh, take them apart a little bit and have a look at the design on them, see the little link to Japanese that appears on these guys as well and give you some insight into where to look for the absolute unique details and that one little bit that might just fall apart, which isn't great when it comes to a collaboration. But we'll see what happens as we take a close-up look at the upcoming release of the Nike Ruo Han Wang pack. This is a Tokyo Butter 23 Secret Channel. I'll Tokyo Butter 23 Secret Channel. Des. My name is Jeff Sunil Des. My name is Jeff Sign every single day from Tokyo, Japan. I bring you content about upcoming sneaker releases, sneaker news, and sneaker reviews. Now, this is probably the fourth or the fifth Korean sneaker that I've done for the channel. Uh, there was a football team, Air Force One, that was supposed to drop in line with the Olympics and the South Korean Olympic team. Uh, that, that didn't, uh, the, the Olympics didn't happen, but the shoes certainly did drop. Um, and then, of course, like I said, two days ago, there was that uh, Casina. Is that the name of the store? in Korea skateboard shop in Korea that uh, has that collaboration with the Dunk Low line uh, it's a very cool collaboration as well if you ask me uh, and then here we are today uh, doing this uh, three pack from Ruo Han Wang uh, and whenever we do the Korean ones whenever I talk about Korea and doing the Korean themed shoes I always say that that's the nearest country to Japan it's kind of a big deal when your neighbor is bringing out something cool like this and there's always that hope that it'll reach your market uh, whereas it might not reach other people's market because it's just next door so you might get your hands on what are Kraken sneakers, rare sneakers. So that's the hope with these guys. Literally from, it's, it's, basically it's kind of weird geography, but the, the uh, Korea's southern tip is, is semi-rural. It's not as, as busy or urban as, as Seoul is in the north. Uh, and uh, Japan's western tip um, is uh, is mostly rural and not as uh, as urban as, as the east where Tokyo is. Um, so the two most rural parts of the two countries are the closest together and it's only something like a 30 or, or 60 minute uh, ferry ride to get across from Japan to Korea. They're that close together but it's the two most rural parts so there really isn't that much tie up between the two countries. Uh, but they are neighbours uh, and there is that sort of like nod to each other and when something happens big in Korea it's often big news here in Japan. And these shoes, I think, are going to be big use because news, use big news because they they're cool for a start. They're great silhouettes. You know what I mean? It's not just sort of obscure like the daybreak silhouette or something like that. These are hot silhouettes. The Blazers, Air Force Ones, and Air Max 90 celebrating their 30th year. Uh, so they've gone with three of the kind of classic silhouettes out there. And then they've really, really planted the artist's own unique design on the shoe. And there's some unique elements in there as well that I think uh, could sort of turn these guys from being great into absolutely awesome. Uh, so first things first, what I'm going to do is I, I think I'm going to use the Air Force Ones or Mm, yeah, I think I'm going to use the Air Force One to zoom in on the Japanese on there. Uh, I can read maybe half of the Japanese alphabet, maybe not as much as half, uh, maybe, I don't know, a quarter. Uh, very difficult, it's something like 
10,000, 12,000 different letters in Japanese. If you think about the 26 letter alphabet, double that to 52 because you have upper and lower case for, the, uh, for English. Uh, so you're learning like 50 odd letters to work that out. 12,000 letters, it's not easy to memorize. Um, and um, so I can't read all of it, but what I'm zoomed in on here is uh, the Japanese on the side. I have no idea why they, they chose to put Japanese on the side of these guys, uh, given that it's a Korean themed sneaker. Uh, but I can read the first two kanji on there that say Shizen, and Shizen means nature or natural. So uh, there's obviously some kind of tie up with these shoes and nature. And I think that comes in the uppers on all three, because all three of the uppers are made with fly leather and fly leather is a type of leather that, that Nike are using uh, that's at least 50% recycled. Uh, how they recycle the leather, leather, I don't know. Maybe it's off cuts from you know another shoe that they, they recycle into these shoes uh, or maybe somehow they churn up the leather and, and you, know, you know churn out a different kind of leather somehow. I don't know. But anyway, more than 50% of that leather on there is recycled on all three of these shoes. So that's the fly leather on there and maybe that's the the connection to Shizen or nature or natural uh, being there on the side of these shoes in Japanese. So, um, so it's, uh, in terms of design, staying close to that Shizen element there, it's really important to note how clean the colors are on this design. They are really solid colors. They're not opaque, they're not pastel, they're not sort of like, um, I don't know, transparent. They're very solid, kind of really powerful colors. And that's the bit I'm going to get into later on in the video when I talk about the thing that might just fall apart. But before we do any of that, I want to get into the two particular features on the shoe, uh, the shoes that I think are important and worthy of note. Now, the one that's sort of like a little I'm going to say disappointing is the Air Max 90 heel. Uh, the Air Max 90 heel has a very distinctive shape to it and I'm, I'm showing it to you guys here now. I think I'm right in saying it's almost like a volt yellow. It's a very violent colour on the back of these ones. Uh, and the branding and the branding cell are both in the same colour so there's no contrast there. Um, and normally that would be fine. Uh, Air Max 90 celebrating the 30th year, a standard silhouette, standard style on the back of the shoe uh, isn't anything to be to be worried about. Uh, but the thing is, when you go over and have a look at the Air Force Ones, which I'm surely doing right now and showing you the back end of those guys, you can see that they've gone with two different uh, brandings on the heel, one being that Nike sort of swoosh and the other being more about the artist and his brand. And then if we go over and look at the Blazers as well, it's exactly the same, where you've got the two different heel designs going on there. Uh, so if we come back to the Air Max 90s, it's kind of like, why didn't you do that? Why didn't you uh, take a risk or do something a bit unique to give a sort of mismatched effect to the heels instead of going with that same kind of standard silhouette, standard patterning on the back there? I don't know why they did it. I'm not that fussed about it, to be honest, but it's uh, just a little sort of anomaly that's worth pointing out. What isn't an anomaly is if you go to the front of the shoes and have a look at the, the tongues, and I can go to any of them, and I don't know which one I'll show you guys first, but uh, you can see the tongues on there also have that similar kind of mismatched branding going on between the left and the right shoes uh, but I'll cycle through the other two shoes in the pack as well so you can see that it's mismatched on all three so you don't have that unique Air Max 90 thing going on the, the heel um, brought forward to the tongue uh, it's not unique on the tongue as well the, the three tongues are all in that um, style of the artist whereas on the heels it's just the Air Max 90 that goes it with the standard style but the other two have that special kind of effect on there so uh, so all in all these are great looking shoes um, they took me by surprise. I didn't see them coming. Uh, I thought they were, as soon as I saw them, I actually only saw one of them. I was like, well, that's cool. I think I'll have a look at that. And then realized they were part of a three pack. Uh, and sometimes like the denims, I did each shoe in the pack, especially because they dropped on different dates. Uh, but for these guys, I thought it was better to mix the whole three together and just bring it to you guys as a one. Uh, and the thing that I'll bring to you as a one last in this video is that thing that I'm worried about. Uh, and it goes back to all that color on there being in those solid colors, very clean, very sharp. My my concern is cracking or the, the image splintering. What's going to happen at the quarter line where your foot naturally bends on the toe box and creates a crease up along the side uh, around about the quarter line area? Is there going to be a lot of deterioration, especially with the colours? And hopefully I'm zooming in on it here and you can see it's almost like a paint on there. And when paint bends, it doesn't do so well. So I would expect these guys to hit some wear and tear pretty fast in their lives and that might disappoint people out there. 
but I might be wrong. Maybe there's something in design that makes paint more rubbery and bendable and flexible, and I just don't know about it. But that's just my take on this uh, sneaker and this pack, this upcoming uh, Nike um, Ru Ruohan Wang uh, pack coming out of Korea slash Germany, where, uh, where the artist is based. So hope you appreciate the content today, guys. You know, I've been doing this every single day for 600 plus days, and I keep on churning out the content, and I keep on getting compliments in the com in the comments down below, and people, you know, helping me keep on going. So thanks for that. Thanks for checking out the content. And as I do this every single day, I'll leave you with that comment that I give you at the end of every single video, which is that you are guaranteed to see me tomorrow.